well, it was quite the introduction. I <laughs> wonder who did that. Well, let me tell you folks, as folks are trickling in, uh, it is an incredible feeling to be up here, uh, walking up here. You know, it's not quite being on the refuge. I mean, there's trees and plants and all sorts of things. Uh, it feels a little bit like I'm on the set of a Lord of the Rings movie. Uh, it was actually J.R. Old Tolkien himself who once said that all who wander are not lost. And I have to say, in my sort of few years of working, uh, going around wandering, feeling lost at times in my career, in my life, I've never felt more found than I do here in the National Wildlife Refuge System and working for the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. Um, it is an absolute honor and pleasure to be here today. And I would just like to uh, thank all of you um, for your heart, your courage, for taking a chance on change. Um, for Rebecca, Cynthia, and I, and all the folks that it took, um, we are just very, very appreciative of you being here. So thank you. Uh, so I thought I'd start. Um, you know, it's funny. Like, walking around, people come up to me, and they're like, oh, you're Michael. You must be uh, that IT guy. And uh, you know, for those of you who know me, it's um, sort of bizarre. I, I'm a biologist. I was trained as a herpetologist in college and uh, grew up the son of a state forest ranger in the great state of West Virginia, uh, quite literally in a log cabin, and grew up uh, very much in the natural world, almost uh, too much. I, I sort of uh, didn't know what it meant, uh, didn't really appreciate it for what it was. But as a biologist, though, I am here today as an ambassador with a message about the power of technology and social media to help us do our important biological work and grow that conservation constituency in a changing America. Now, we heard from Rick Coleman earlier a uh, phenomenal charge uh, to get away from the email, right? I mean, who doesn't want to do that? Uh, and to get back out to the field. And Rick, I could not agree more. But you know what's great about technology these days? it can come with you. <laughs> As you go out into the field, out into the refuge, across the stage, wherever, it can come with you. And I'm here to tell you that, believe it or not, technology is the key to getting Generation Next back outside. Technology will be the key to getting the next generation to go back outside. Just before the break, uh, as people were walking in, uh, there was a video about the social media revolution by um, at xco and at equalman on Twitter. These people don't even have names, right? <laughs> they just have Twitter handles. Uh, nowadays, colleges and universities are not giving out email addresses. Email is passe. And how many of you are dealing with email challenges, right? As we must take advantage of the silver tsunami that Evan talked about earlier, we must sail across the oceans and row down the rivers of the social media landscape. And in order to do that, I'm going to offer uh, three Ps for you, right? Pretty easy to remember. People, place, and purpose, right? People, place, and purpose. People, believe it or not, Social networking, no matter all the technology and the computers, is really about human relationships. Behind those computer screens, those people eat, they love other people, they have feelings, believe it or not, and they have real relationships. And technology is just an enabler for real human emotion between people. We can use technology to connect people to people. We can also use technology to connect people to wildlife and the natural world. And there's a great workshop here uh, about geocaching and different tools, and there's all kinds of information online about how to do this. Now, what's even crazier about all of this is that the worldwide webers of the world have actually made this really easy for us, right? It turns out that the most popular, one of the most popular websites in the world, Twitter's logo, it's a bird, right? <laughs> it is a bird. One of the, the most popular game on the iPhone and the iPad, uh, Angry Birds, is also about birds, right? <laughs> so we've got all these like techie social media people out there branding themselves with our mission, right? And here we are with our mission, not using enough the technologies <laughs> to get this message that they're already ready to hear out there. Now, for those of you who actually played Angry Birds, it is a gross violation of the Migratory Bird Treaty Act. Um, <laughs> so. You know, maybe, maybe not the best example. But people, again, people care about wildlife and the planetary resources that we are fighting to protect. 
You know, my career shifted from field research in biology to communications uh, through an internship that I had at the National Geographic Society in Washington, D.C. Actually, many of our great speakers this week have come from the National Geographic Society. And why National Geographic is so effective in achieving a shockingly similar mission to our own is through the power and the beauty of images, technology, sharing that with the world. These images, they galvanize our hearts and minds. Uh, they connect us to the natural world and the people who live in that natural world, and they're absolutely breathtaking. They're absolutely inspiring images of wildlife. Now, believe it or not, these beautiful images are not from National Geographic. They're from our own Flickr site in the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. So, whoo! <laughs> exactly. So believe it or not, there is a lot going on in this agency to engage people in a different way around our exciting and important mission. The next I want to talk about place, a sense of place. We've talked a lot, and a lot of you folks in the refuge system, it really is about a sense of geography and a sense of place. And again, the great thing about technology is that it can go with you. More than 50% of Americans will predominantly access the internet by 2020 through a mobile device not through a PC or a computer that is connected to um, a, a wall. Now, I sit on the Department of the Interior's Open Government Work Group that's working to try to figure out how the different bureaus can be more transparent and use technology to provide better services to citizens and be better government. And they talk a lot about this thing called the green button, right? It's this math magical, mythical app that you could have your mobile device and it would connect you to the services that the Department of the Interior would provide. Um, what's hysterical, though, is that no one knows what this app would actually do, <laughs> right? Because the working group, it's a lot of you know, um, different folks from the department. But imagine, imagine an app that could be on a device that you could take a picture of a flower and it could tell you what it was. Imagine an app that you could look up where the water you're drinking comes from. All of this data is out there, and all of the technology is there. The problem is that I don't know how to build that app, right? Does anyone here know how to build that app? No? But does anyone in here know about the biological resources that they work on, their species, communities, anyone know about the data? What we have to do is we have to increasingly connect our biologists, our scientists, law enforcement officers, administrative professionals, fire, all of the different disciplines of the National Wildlife Refuge System to our IT professionals, to the folks innovating in the world around technology in order to figure out what in the world the green button would actually do. And so finally, I just want to talk about purpose, the other P. Um, one of my favorite parts about working in the National Wildlife Refuge System, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, is that I'm surrounded constantly by amazing storytellers, right? How many of you all are refuge managers in the room? Refuge manager, or ever been a refuge manager? I'm telling you, you all have got the best stories, right? You have done everything. You have seen everything out there, and it's pretty, pretty amazing. Um, one story I got introduced to um, through the vision process was this book. I don't know if anyone's ever read it. Uh, it's a gift from Tina Dobrinsky um, from me, our conference chair. It's called Give a Mouse a Cookie. Has anyone ever read this book, or you probably read it to your kids. It's not exactly adult literature. Um, but it's pretty interesting, because in the book, uh, it starts out that you know, if you give a mouse a cookie, he'll want a glass of milk. And he wants a glass of milk, he wants a napkin. And by the end of the book, um, the mouse has cleaned the house for this little kid, done all of his chores. And the mouse is like, shoo, I'm thirsty. I uh, need a glass of milk. And then he wants a cookie. But it really became our modus operandi for the vision process, believe it or not. Because what we learned is that you know, change is tough and change is scary. And so we have to give ourselves tools in order to meet our future head on. But we have to do it sort of one tool at a time. And we have to use technology to do that. Now, has anyone in here ever worked with someone in your, in your community or maybe a child or a family that came to the refuge that was afraid of, of nature in some way? Uh, afraid of snakes, maybe? Spiders? Anyone? Yeah, so people are afraid of nature. And yet, we want them to connect with our mission and to not be afraid. If we are going to do that, we need to stop being afraid of technology, right? It is the key to the next generation, and we have to let go of our fears. We've heard a lot today or uh, this week about courage and leadership. And believe it or not, it applies to the future of technology and social media in the refuge system and the Fish and Wildlife Service. You know, when you think about the greatest conservationists of our era, Rachel Carson, Aldo Leopold, uh, the great conservationists we've heard this week, Doug Brinkley, it's 
Sylvia Earle, they are all prolific writers. They're great communicators, and they're really good in getting the message out. And so I will promise you that whoever is the next Rachel Carson and the next out of Leopold, it will be technology and social media that creates the legacy of which they will attain, right? It's the only way that we can make our mission and the work go viral. Because the thing is, is the message from Generation Next, we have done a lot to mess this planet up, right? There is so much work that has to be done to protect our natural resources and to rebuild our wildlife populations across the North American landscape and across the world. And because of climate change and other stressors to the environment, we have so little time. But you know what's really, you know in our world what's really great at doing a bunch of stuff in like a tiny little bit of time? Like super fast thinking computers, right? Technology. This is our only hope because we only have so much time to accomplish an incredible amount of work. And so I really urge you all to stop being afraid and to embrace this technology. We've got social media stations and lots of like young, attractive people walking around, like there to help you. I mean, this is a phenomenal opportunity for all of you to really embrace the future that we all have to meet head on in order to achieve our mission and protect wildlife for generations and generations to come. So I'll close in saying that you are all public servants and you have incredible stories. Get online and share them with the world. Uh, thank you so much for your time and uh, I look forward to meeting you this week.